Okay. Hello, Lewis. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, excited to show Mawari to the Korean uh, market. So could you please introduce yourself and the Mawari project? Sure. Uh, I am Luis Ramirez, uh, founder and CEO of Mawari. Uh, I am originally from Mexico, but I have lived in all over the world, in Germany, in the US, uh, in Japan. I have been to Seoul and Incheon so many times. So, yeah, could say I'm a citizen of the world. My background is um, mathematics, uh, but I've been always involved in creative technology since maybe uh, 2010 or, or more, and in XR since 2013. And I started Mawari in 2017. So, could you explain about Mawari, please? Sure. Uh, okay, so think about... Uh, like media that I will start with the vision. So, uh, today we actually uh, watch 2D media, right? Uh, we have, uh, movies, uh, video conference like this one. And we, uh, uh, thesis was that, okay, so you have the media on your phone or in any screen. And is that the screen will come very, very, very close to your eyes, which actually I'm showing it here. Like right now, my, my screen is the, the vision pro and that becomes that, uh, the real Real world is actually all your um, uh, computer interface per se. So that's that's why uh, we created Mawari because we saw a niche and a need that okay, so this is a new computing uh, paradigm, and we need to actually uh, explore how this would look like. So give and let's do it again. So in 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 twenty in. Uh, in, in Japan, I actually co-founded a digital arts festival called uh, Mutech. Uh, Mutech uh, focuses on promoting uh, emerging art that um, actually experiments with uh, cutting-edge technology, usually uh, audiovisual technology. So back in, in 2015 and 2016, when we started the festival in Japan, actually we realized that um, there was uh, a lot of interest into getting uh, into immersive technology, but um, there was a huge gap because for creators, it was not the same to, you know, uh, create uh, some other type of audiovisual art to actually something in VR or AR in which you needed to learn the game engines and other type of skill set that it was not really that accessible. So this is how we came to, okay, so we should create Mawari with a mission and vision to uh, accelerate um, the distribution and creation of uh, immersive content. And until today, that's still our, our mission. And then we're working uh, hard to make that future happen. Uh, okay, that was a very great vision for Mawari. And could you um, explain more about spatial computing? And what is your ultimate goal more over than the vision of Mawari? Sure. Uh, okay. So special computing. Uh, as you see, I'm wearing a Vision Pro. Uh, we see that's the next computing interface in which, uh, you are the interface and, and the, and the world is actually all your computing space. So you will start interacting with, with, uh, overlaid and, and digital content seamlessly with the real world. And that means, uh, displays and little by little, all the things that we do day to day will be start transforming into this new um, media. What is your role at Mawari and what is the problem Mawari is solving? And how do how does Mawari solve that problem and what is Mawari's ultimate goal? Sure. Uh, thanks. Those are very good questions. Uh, first, my, my role at Mawari, I'm founder and CEO, but I also oversee vision and uh, product roadmap uh, today. So, and what is the problem that we're solving? Okay, we're solving the problem of scalability of 3D content to uh, immersive devices like this one. So, let me explain how we actually realize about this problem. So, think about Netflix. When you press play, uh, within less than a second, you have a 4K movie on, on your device, and it is uh, unlimited type of content, depending on what you like. So, we as end users, uh, we actually uh, take this for granted, we think it's normal, but actually the infrastructure that uh, that uh, was built took about 20 years to have it to the level that we have today. So it's obvious that when we 
all as a uh, society shift to this type of devices. Uh, we so, but the reality is that, uh, that readiness is not there yet today. And this is because, uh, 3D content is similar to how movies and pictures were in the nineties in which you have to download them first before actually enjoying the content. And if you think about like, okay, so 3D content now we are talking about gigabytes or terabytes of content that would take minutes of or hours to download as a, end user, you don't have the patience for, for that anymore. So there needs to be a way to actually, similar to today, have this content readily available as soon as you press play and have unlimited options. So that's that's the problem that we're solving. And uh, we created a 3D streaming technology for this purpose. So how does Mawari's deep in network differ from traditional centralized content delivery networks? And what advantages does this decentralized approach offer? Okay, th this is a great question. So first, let's start with um, how 3D content uh, is delivered and why we chose a decentralized network versus a centralized network. Uh, okay, so, okay, so 3D content uh, needs um, real time uh, rendering and uh, for, for it to happen. So that means that GPUs need to be distributed close to the end user because we need low latency for uh, this content to be uh, delivered into these devices so that we have a, a, a seamless uh, experience uh, per, per se. So think about if the server was in New York and is streaming all the way to Seoul, you may not have uh, the same user experience because uh, the rendering is already too late uh, for what you're um, are seeing with your eyes, right? So, but if the uh, the server is in Seoul, um, then you may get um, a much faster response. So, when back in 2021, uh, after the pandemic, uh, we we had um, a good traction with uh, companies like T-Mobile, as, as as you mentioned, and uh, some other uh, good brands. Uh, but they asked us, okay, so can can you scale this service to hundred thousands of users? And at the time we say the, uh, okay, yeah, let's, let's take a look into this. We were partners with uh, AWS and, uh, and we ask, okay, so do you have distributed uh, GPUs in all the, these uh, regions and data centers? And they say, no, sorry, we cannot help you uh, with this. So that's, that's the main point is uh, today, uh, uh, AWS or cloud or Azure, they have centralized uh, locations for their data centers and uh, it works well for their current use cases. But for uh, ex uh, special computing on FXR, we need distributed uh, GPUs. So it, there's not enough demand for them to justify investing billions, if not trillions of dollars in building a new architecture. Uh, so for us, it was like, okay, so do we wait a couple of years for this to be solved or can we try to do it on our own? And the answer is, let's try to do it on our own. And that's when we got inspired by by Render, by Helium, and we saw that they were able to actually uh, bootstrap their supply really quickly through through Web3. And that was the aha moment for us. So actually, through, through the centralized and distributed systems, it's very compelling to align incentives between the, the community and the overall projects and it can be scaled a lot more. So instead of us actually, you know, raising billions of dollars just to build a GPU network for a special computing, uh, we decided, okay, so what if uh, we, with the help of of the community and third party uh, infrastructure providers, we can scale this. It is possible, but also to keep transparency uh, between all the players and, and everyone into alignment, we need a, a blockchain layer, right? Like where all the transactions, everything is visible to everyone so that there are no surprises. So. To put it in a different way, so a special computing to scale needs distributed compute, but the only way to um, to actually scale distributed compute at a speed 
that we needed for 2024 and 2025 is through Web3 and decentralization. Okay, that was a great answer for that was So another question is, what opportunity does Moari Spatial Compute, Spatial Streaming SDK provide to developers? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, so from the get-go, uh, our philosophy was to uh, keep developers in the tools and environment that, that they know. Because something that I, uh, we saw a lot is that uh, a lot of uh, new toolkits try to remove developers, not in special computing, but in other uh, areas as well, from their comfort zone. So if a lot of developers spend more time learning new tools versus actually focusing on building uh, their, their work. So what, what we are providing is a Unity and Unreal Engine um, plugins. So they don't have to leave the framework that they already know. We we focus on give them, giving them a tool to uh, enhance and optimize their content versus trying to reinvent the wheel. So that's kind of like one of the values to developers. The second value to developer is as we provide a, a very robust and scalable technology, we give them uh, an opportunity to really uh, for their special computing content to have a very compelling graphics interactive uh, content that otherwise they wouldn't be able to to provide. So that gives them, I would say, even a competitive advantage uh, towards uh, other applications. Um, you, I, th I heard that Moari is doing a lot of collaborations with key partners such as KDDI, T-Mobile, Netflix, and BMW. And what do you think, what made these companies to choose Moari to collaborate with? Yeah, so, so in, a, in a nutshell, uh, okay, so telco companies, uh, they have 5G, right? And uh, they they were looking at the time for use cases that are compatible or or good stories for for 5G. So of course, streaming for XR requires low latency, requires um, some some more bandwidth than the current use cases. So so this was a good match. So that's that's the main point uh, that with Mawari we were able to show that this was not just uh, a vision and just a thought, but that actually we were able to start streaming. XR into devices. So this was uh, really uh, interesting for uh, telco companies to, to start collaborating with us. And then for for content, they have assets in, in 3D. So think about like one of our collaborations with Netflix was with uh, Ghost in the Shell and um, Ghost in the Shell SAC 2045, which is fully in 3D. So they have super high quality 3D assets that uh, their fans can only see into these screens, but we propose, okay, so what if your fans can actually wear the glasses and interact with your, uh, with the anime in, in full 3D, like if the anime was in, in the real world. So obviously that was very compelling for, for IG production because it's a new way of uh, fan engagement. So what we provide to IP holders is a new monetization and a new distribution channel that it was not existing before. On top of that, uh, it creates a lot more intimate um, interaction between the fan and 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 the and the IP. So that's that's also why this type of companies were um, or are still interested in Maori and lit uh, ultimately because we can scale to the to all the users they need. So um, especially in the collaboration with KDDI, um, how did the AI Power Digital Human Project ICO influence Maori's technological progress? That's a great question um, because actually that's kind of like one of the inflection points in the story of Maori. So KDDI had this vision of having a AI digital assistant for the smartphones and smart glasses, uh, but that was back in 2018. So today you you can imagine that easily because we have ChatGPT, right? So, but 
um, in 2018 was very futuristic. So they asked to many companies, not just Mawari, okay, can you help us um, have this uh, digital assistant in smart glasses? And the obvious answer that it was that the only way to do that was to stream because uh, smartphones and smart glasses don't have enough compute power to process the backend of AI, but also the complex graphics of a digital human. So, so we went down the rabbit hole. We did a lot of research and, and this showed uh, David and Goliath uh, story because some of the companies participating in, in this bid or this project uh, were big tech. And actually we were at the time just a three person startup and we were able to beat them. At the time, we built a prototype with the existing technology, which was 2D, uh, 2D video streaming and, uh, and the current architecture of, uh, of content delivery. And that's when we realized, uh, okay, this is not really going to scale. It's not compatible for the future as, as we envision it in, in Mawari. And that's when we decided to, okay, so let's, let's focus on building, uh, 3D streaming technology. Uh, it took a while. It took, took us almost six years, uh, five years and a half of a, a lot of R and D trial and error. But right now we, we have it at to a state that is, um, good for, 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 for the consumer. And in the end, uh, we have, uh, now three patents and 11 more uh, uh, being approved. I think that's a very great achievement for Mawari. And Mawari recently raised uh, 10 mi about 10 million investment with Samsung Next as a key investor. So what do you think, uh, what motivated Samsung Next to invest in Mawari? And how do you think this funding will impact Mawari? Okay, so about the impact. Uh, the impact is significant because obviously Samsung is a player in, in a special computing. They announced a partnership uh, with Google in which they will uh, also create their own uh, special computing device. So there's a lot of strategic synergy uh, there. Uh, the reason why they invest in Mawari is, is also for, for the same. They saw strategic synergy, but more than anything, we had great conversations with the Samsung Next team. They have a lot of experience in investing in uh, XR and AI startups, and they really uh, value that our one our tech is very strong and two that we have a very specific vision and roadmap and we know how to monetize special computing which is one of the challenges for for most of the the, the startups moving forward in the collaboration I see that um, the ecosystem will become similar to the smartphones in which we have uh, iOS and Android here it will be probably three players which will Will be uh, Apple, Meta, and potentially Samsung with uh, Android X, XR as uh, as main platforms for for developers. So of course, being in partnership uh, in the early stages with one of the big players uh, help us uh, give presence in, in in the market and uh, reachability to developers and end, end users. And specifically to Korea, I do see as a, something very beneficial because of course uh, Samsung has a lot of presence there. Uh, so we being able to collaborate with them will open a lot of doors. Okay, then besides of Samsung, um, you, uh, your team, Mawari, uh, decided to build and launch on Solana. And why did you uh, make this decision to build on Solana? Sure. Uh, one of the main decisions is basically because Solana is one of the most uh, thriving and growing uh, blockchain ecosystems. Uh, they have a very good uh, developer community is strong, but more than anything, also they have also, uh, is one of the best, uh, deep in ecosystems, uh, per, per se. So when, when you think about, uh, companies like Helium, uh, Render, uh, IO.net, all of those actually, uh, can potentially become a Mawari partner in the near future because they provide the resources that we need to scale our network. So interoperability and this, uh, cross uh, cross chain uh, collaboration. That's what we see a uh, huge potential uh, in Solana and the main reason why we chose to develop in this ecosystem. 
Uh, okay, I hope uh, Mawari could develop on more layers too, except like Solana and other layers. And could you explain? Uh, I heard that Mawari is um, doing a node sale um, next month. So could you explain the upcoming Mawari node sale and what are the goals of this sale and what benefits can the participants expect? Sure. Uh, okay. So why we're doing the node sale? Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, our vision is to scale spatial computing and become the Akamai of a special computing of uh, XR. So for that, we need a lot of in, uh, infrastructure providers. Uh, so the goal number one is to uh, expand our network and decentralize it. Uh, and how are we going to achieve this? Uh, well, we have uh, at Maguari Network uh, has actually three type of, of nodes. Uh, the first node is the renderer and streamer node. Uh, we call it a special streamer. That's the one that uses the GPU and is in charge of uh, rendering and streaming the content. Then we have the guardian node, which is a verification node. Uh, this node is in charge of keeping uh, in check the health of the network, making sure that the renderers are doing a good job, making sure that everything uh, is in place. This is the most under uh, role uh, in the network because uh, it, it helps was maintain it transparent and 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 robust um, of November uh, will focus on the last uh, node is um, we can call it a network checker the name in inside Mawari is uh, Mawari Pulse which uh, it basically checks network statistics and provides us intelligence on how we can optimize uh, the, the the network so that being said uh, the node cell uh, as I mentioned, we'll focus on on the guardian or verifier node, and um, it is a very good opportunity to join the ecosystem early because uh, we do believe that Maguari has the potential of becoming the Akamai of XR, and um, and it's a opportunity for the public to to participate into building the next generation of the internet. And you can imagine, uh, it's not just about uh, joining a, a node cell for joining a node cell, it's more you're joining because you're here to, to build with us together the next generation of the internet. Maybe I should participate for the next generation of the internet. Yes, please, please, please do. Check our website and all the details will be there. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so I think the XR industry is evolving rapidly as I heard her interview, but I think there are still some significant challenges. What do you see as the biggest challenge and opportunities for the XR streaming and spatial computing over the next five years sure uh well there are two main challenges uh one is uh the amount of devices and the second one is uh the amount of content right we without both uh the industry cannot uh, grow so it, when it comes to the devices uh i'm comfortable to wear for longer periods of time so the only way to make these devices more accessible is to make them as slim as your sunglasses. So, but in order to achieve that, you need to sacrifice compute power. So it means that that compute power needs to be offloaded to remote servers. This is where Mawari comes into place because we help uh, accelerate this and a very good validation of this vision uh, in which uh, XR devices or special compute devices will um, just terminal like is the Meta Orion. So you saw the Meta Orion uh, a few weeks ago that Mark Zuckerberg um, showcased. It's very slim and all compute is actually processed on on the puck and and and, and remote devices. So we see that uh, that's that's one of the necessary elements for uh, end users to become more interested into this type of uh, devices. The second one is the content. Uh, so it's a chicken and the egg. So if there are not a, enough devices, developers are not interested in developing from the platform because there is not enough people that can uh, check their content, right? So uh, what we see is that, uh, and this is a very good uh, example of uh, blockchain in which we have a lot of 
good thriving developer ecosystems in in L1s and L2s and they have ecosystem grants and and the the community is very uh, committed. So we need to, to create between all the players in the industry a similar ecosystem in which developers uh, that are already developing in XR and, and new entrants have this environment in which they can freely create until um, they they reach production level. And this is one of our main missions uh, moving forward, it really help the ecosystem to spearhead with all the, the knowledge that we have acquired in the last seven years so that uh, we can break that chicken and the egg situation. We, we've done it so far in Japan, but now our mission is to uh, go across the globe and, and, and help this. This is a kind of extension of the question that I asked before, just before. Well, so what are the major milestones for Mawari that Mawari is aiming to achieve in the coming years? And what is your plans for the future? Sure. The short term milestones, of course, is uh, is the node cell and achieve the centralization as, and as, as scalability of uh, our network. Uh, but uh, mid term, I would say, is to really, yeah, it's spearhead this uh, developer ecosystem and then by 2027 we see that's the year when manufacturers will start releasing the next generation that is more consumer friendly of these uh, special computing uh, devices so by 2027 uh, we will have a, a very healthy and scalable network with a thriving developer ecosystem that is ready to deploy content to, to these devices so that that's kind of like the biggest milestones we we have uh, so far. Well, I think Mawari has a very great vision for the spatial computing and the XR experience for the next uh, generation of the internet. So thank you very much for the interview, Lewis. And do you have any more things to say to the Korean retail investors? Anyo uh, haseo, Luis. I know very little Korean but I love Korean food. I love going to Seoul. So hopefully we will have an event soon in Korea and we'll see you there. Okay, thank you, Lewis, for today's interview. And thank you for watching today's interview. And please stay tuned for other interviews that will be on Block Media. And this was Tony from Block Media. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.